guys probably want to learn about solar, don't you? Probably want to know why I'm in here, because it kind of feels like my second home for the past couple months. Uh, yeah, let me get out of here. Welcome to our solar bay. So join me down in our solar bay. This is where all the magic happens and where I've spent a lot of my time sweating like crazy. We've got our battery bank, our inverter, solar charge controllers, and all the disconnect switches and fusing to protect the whole system and be able to do maintenance on everything, just isolating it from power whenever you need to work on any individual portion of the system. We started with the battery tray. We went with AGM batteries, Lifeline AGMs. They're top of the line AGM batteries, so they're about as good as you can get without going lithium, because, hey, lithium's expensive. I'd love to have them, but luckily we have a diesel pusher, so we can handle the weight, because we do have 720 pounds of batteries here. And because of that, this bay floor probably couldn't handle that footprint holding 720 pounds, so we had to build a custom frame. <laughs> that actually mounted up to the frame rails and suspended down and it's actually sitting about an eighth of an inch off the floor so there's no weight on the bay floor right now once we got that done got all the batteries loaded in that was quite a feat <laughs> Nothing. don't worry yourself this takes <laughs> maximum effort <laughs> Who designed this battery box? I don't want to answer that. <sighs> Much success! Got them all wired up. mount to actually mount the inverter off of the same frame which hey, keeps that 70 pounds off the floor and then paneled it out a little bit with some matte black plywood mounted our charge controllers mounted all the wiring to get the system together and then it was off to the races with running wires down from the roof and connecting the solar panels in and just making everything as neat and tidy as possible makes it a lot easier to troubleshoot if you ever do have an issue if you don't have just a spaghetti explosion of wires hanging out down in your bay so starting with the batteries we have lifeline AGMs like I said they're actually six volt there's six of them when you take two six volt and they're 400 amp hours each and tie them in series that gives you the 12 volt but they stay the 400 amp hours so you series three pairs now you have three 12 volt batteries that are 400 amp hours so when you parallel all three sets of your now 12 volt batteries you get a giant 12 volt 1200 amp hour battery now with AGMs typically just want to go down to about a 50% draw so we have 600 amp hours of usable power in this battery bank that power all comes up to a main bus bar for the positives and comes across through a 400 amp catastrophic T-fuse through a termination switch and into the power inverter 
power inverter we have is a Xandrex Freedom SW3012. So it's a 3000 watt 12 volt power inverter. It has a 6000 watt surge which is great because that 6000 watt for 5 seconds. That allows us to turn on our, one of our overhead roof ACs without having to have a soft start on it because it can handle the locked rotor amps. Now we can only run it for maybe four hours or so before we have to start thinking about maybe turning it off so we have enough power to get by until the morning but it can run it and that's nice. Now the charge controllers we have are Outback Flexmax 80s so they're 150 volt 80 amp charge controllers and there's two of them. Each of them has 960 watts of solar on each of them. So one has 960, the other has 960, and they're working in conjunction in parallel with each other. And the power comes in through there, and they each have their own separate 110 amp catastrophic T fuse that runs to a terminal switch, termination switch, and then to the positive bus bar. So that power, when it comes in, can go down and charge the battery banks and then back out and into the inverter and it's all tied together there at one point. It's hard to see because it's all tucked neatly behind everything but we have a 500 amp shunt installed that allows you to run all your 110 volt and 12 volt appliances, lights, whatever, the grounds through the shunt and then any power used is being read and monitored. So you can see exactly how much power you've got left in your battery bank, how much you're using, how much you're bringing in. It's just a really great way to monitor that. And just like the positive bus bar we have, we also have a negative bus bar hidden back there so all the grounds can come in and join into one 4 aught cable running to the chassis ground. And as should have mentioned that too with the batteries, everything is tied together with 4 aught. So very, very large cable. It's welding cable, it's like 1,600 strands, so it's really flexible, but still high volume wire. So coming inside, we've actually run wires up behind the refrigerator here, changed out this wall panel in the process because it was pink clad. We aren't gonna go there. Uh, <laughs> but we have the, that shunt has the battery monitor on it. That's this unit right here, the Victron. BMV 712. Uh, it comes with Bluetooth, which is awesome because then you can just whip out your phone, pull up the app, look at it. You can be outside the rig within a reasonable different distance. If you're in bed at night, you want to check on it, just look it out on your app. Good to go. You got the uh, main control panel for the inverter, so you can control and monitor everything from the inverter in here. And then both of the charge controllers have their own remote display as well, so you can monitor what each of their output is coming in. And uh, it's really cool to compare the input from the panels, output to the inverter, and total draw from the batteries. So you can see what's coming out of the batteries versus what's actually being drawn. So if you have 100 amps being drawn, but you might only be taking 40 amps out because you're getting 60 amps from the batteries. So it's just really cool to be able to monitor everything inside and see what's going on. And You really want to keep track of your batteries in general, just so you know you're not getting below that 50% mark. And we have yet to install, but it will go off the back of the uh, inverter control a remote generator start so that if we can set it to parameters if it gets to 50 percent on the batteries while we're away it will automatically fire the generator up which will then turn the charger on that's inside the inverter 150 amp charger and bring the batteries back up to a safe level you can set a cutoff point as well too so another portion of the system is to actually you have to wire in a sub panel which would then have everything that runs off of the inverter wired through it. So we have two roof AC units, but we only wired one through the inverter. We didn't wire the electric portion of the hot water heater through. We didn't wire the washer dryer through. Some of the things that you don't, you're not really going to use while you're boondocking or you just don't have the capacity to use, left those in the main panel. And then all the sub panel items are the things that will be powered and have usable when you go. We have all of our outlets. Every outlet in here is usable. One of the AC units, our refrigerator, just almost everything except for the hot water heater, the second AC unit, and the washer dryer. So we actually had to wire that through back here. Ended up being pretty convenient because in the bedroom here, we actually have a main panel. 50 amp panel was down below. We had to take take that apart, 
pull out all the breakers that we wanted to run into the sub panel and you throw in a 30 amp breaker here that runs down to the inverter and then back up to power the sub panel and luckily there was enough wire hiding in the walls from this that once we took everything loose back through there we were able to go up here behind this TV and hand that over here <laughs> we were able to put the sub panel in right up in that same yeah. opening there so the wires were just long enough to make it up in and then like I said pop, popped every breaker in there that we were going to use while we're out boondocking and then it's just nice and tucked away behind a custom little TV mount we did good to go wait for my lovely assistant to get up here with me <laughs> she just loves coming up here she loves the roof but this is where all the magic happens yeah buddy 12 160 watt solar panels sucking in all the juice stealing all the sun from you guys but you can steal the sun too and the silver so what we have here is two separate series arrays of 960 watts we have six panels all wired in series going to one of those charge controllers you saw down below and then the other six wired in a separate series run down to the other charge controller so then those two charge controllers are paralleled so you get a high voltage run you can use smaller wire run down to the controller and then it converts it over to higher amperage and you get two of those now some people want to do series versus parallel depending on the circumstances if you have shading it's an issue for series because if I were to take my hand in all of these cells that are available, each one of these is a cell, if I were to put my hand like that, the output of this whole array would be chopped in half, which is your shading issue with series. But if you know you're gonna be parked out where there's not shading, it's a lot better to go in series. Parallel makes it so if you shade one panel, that panel still gets its full output while this one is reduced. But we have two halves now, so if maybe we have shade on one side of the rig, we're still getting 960 watts worth of output over here. And we've also, if you can show down close here, I made custom brackets at my work. To raise the panels up, the brackets that you get when you get the panel, hold it maybe an inch off the roof. And there's two things wrong with that. One, it holds it so close to the roof that it actually, the heat that's radiated off the panel is held and trapped under the panel. And solar panels actually don't like to be hot. Kind of an oxymoron, they have to be in the sun to work, but they don't like to be hot. The cooler they are, the better they work. So one thing that's wrong with that is it holds it close. The other thing is when it's held down that far, these AC units, if the sun's off of, at an angle, will cast a shadow onto them and then you're creating your own shade on your panels. So these brackets I made lift them up and you'd have to have a 7.30 or 8 o'clock at night angle to be able to get any shadow cast onto these panels at this point. It'll save you a lot of heat problems in the future if you get them raised up a little bit. Shading issues will be taken care of as well. And uh, easier to clean underneath too if you're getting debris and things off your roof. So r running a special bracket I'm sure there's some on eBay I didn't look because I had the capabilities of being able to make them myself. Um, making a custom bracket that holds them up a little higher would be a really good choice uh, when you're installing these. And it also makes it so if there's ever an issue with a panel, I have these thumb screws and wing nuts that I can just undo by hand, no tools needed. And when you undo all four of them, the panel could literally just pop right off the roof and be swapped out. And it also makes it so the tilt brackets I built, you just loosen that on two sides, you, you tilt it up into the air, install your bar, lock it back down, and you're good to go. And you've got it tilted for northern camping up in Canada or Alaska when you really need to angle back towards the equator and get that sun throughout the day. It makes it really simple and tool free when you're up on the roof. All right, hopefully you guys 
got a little bit of information out of that. It wasn't meant to be a how-to video, it was just meant to show you what we've got going on with our system. And uh, if you are interested in a little more in-depth information on things like inverters or batteries or panels, drop a comment below and if there's enough interest I'll throw something together that goes a little more in-depth into it. This was just wanting to show you what's possible on your own installing things with just knowledge gained online and saving a little bit of money to get good components. So <laughs> we'll get this one up to speed with how the system works eventually but uh, as for now she can read the battery monitor and yeah that's about it. <laughs> oh we've got plenty of power let's run something all right. <laughs> So, yeah, like I say, if you like it or you, you have any questions, drop a comment below. We'll try to get back to you or throw together another video, and hopefully we'll see you on the road. Mosquito. I'm filming you going in. Are you really? Whoop. I figured that was going to happen. Did you get that on film? Yep. <laughs>